Welcome to this online course content that supports preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam. The supplemental presentation to the study guide is intended to aid those individuals who are preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam as required by the Maryland Tree Expert licensing law. Anyone seeking to practice or advertise tree care services in the state of Maryland must obtain this license from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. This presentation corresponds to the information in the online study guide. The text of the study guide, version 5.1, may be found at dnr.maryland.gov forward slash forest. Click on the Urban and Community Forestry tab at the top of the page and then Tree Expert Law in the menu on the left-hand side of the website. Maryland Tree Expert Exam, Study Guide Version 5.1, Chapter 2, Tree Biology and Physiology. During the course of this presentation, keep in mind what a tree needs to grow. These include light, air, water, nutrients, and the often forgotten need, space. Trees are living beings made up of cells, and cells are the building blocks of life. This photo shows twig wood from an American beech at 200 magnification. Trees are living beings made up of cells, and cells are the building blocks of life. In plants, new cells come from the division of existing cells. Tree cell division occurs in structures called meristems or in meristematic tissue. Following division, cells undergo differentiation. This changes the structure and allows cells to assume specific functions. When cells elongate at tips and roots, this is at the point of the apical meristem. When lateral buds are inhibited by the active growth of the terminal buds, this is called apical dominance. Trees go up and out from the tips. This presentation will cover the following tree components, roots, trunk and stem, crown and leaves, fruits and flowers. Please note on this graphic the root system of this tree. It extends quite far horizontally, but depth into the soil is only approximately 24 inches. Trees that lose their leaves every year are called deciduous. Trees that hold their leaves for more than one year are called evergreen. Needles and scales of conifer trees perform the same function as leaves of broadleaf trees. Leaves are the food producers of the trees. Leaf function includes photosynthesis, transpiration, and respiration. Photosynthesis is the process of turning carbon dioxide and water into simple carbohydrates and oxygen driven by the energy of the sun. It is the process by which green plants use light to build sugar molecules. Literally, the word photosynthesis means putting together with light. Much of the photosynthate made through the photosynthetic process is stored in the form of sugar or starches in the twigs, trunks, and roots for later energy requirements. The energy created and stored by this photosynthetic process must be greater than the energy used in the respiration process. Respiration is when the sugars are used combined with oxygen to produce usable cellular energy for the plant's processes. If the photosynthetic material does not exceed the respiration energy use, the tree uses up its energy reserves. If this occurs over time, the tree may run out of energy reserves and die. Fall colors result from the breakdown of green chlorophyll in the leaves and the expression of the other pigments begin to show they were always present in the leaf. You can just see them when the green chlorophyll starts to break down. Anthocyanins produce red and purple colors and carotenoids 
produce the yellow, oranges, and red colors. Respiration is the process by which chemical energy is used by the tree for all of its biological functions. In this process, the bonds of sugars and starches are broken, yielding energy, carbon dioxide, and water. Respiration occurs at all times, and oxygen is required for normal respiration to occur. The energy created and stored by photosynthesis must be greater than the energy used in this respiration process. Otherwise, the tree uses up its energy reserves, and if this occurs over time, the tree may run out of energy reserves and start to decline or die. Transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from leaf surfaces. The evaporation of water cools the leaves and creates a transpirational pool that moves water up through the xylem of the tree. About 95% of the water absorbed by a plant is transpired. The rate of transpiration is affected by factors such as temperature, humidity, and available water. Transpiration is also affected by cuticle thickness on the leaf, the presence or absence of hair on the leaf surface, and the number and location of stomata, which are the small pores between two guard cells that regulate gas exchange. As an example, a plant with thick cuticle, small leaves, and sunken stomata are best adapted to hot, dry conditions. This graphic shows the cross-section of a leaf. Discussed in the previous slide are the cuticle. A thick cuticle example may be that, say, of a rhododendron. And at the bottom of the slide are the guard cells and stomate. When water is deficient, the stomate closes via the guard cell. This is to reduce the loss of water through transpiration. Photosynthesis slows down, and the visible symptom you may see is wilting. Stomate are also the opening through which the tree absorbs carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. Twigs are small stems that provide the support structure for leaves, flowers, and fruits. Branches support the twigs. Buds can occur along the twig at the base of each leaf, just under the bark, or at the tip of each twig. A bud is an unexpanded shoot or flower. Terminal bud scale scars are useful in measuring twig elongation. You can measure annual tree growth by measuring the distance between terminal bud scale scars or nodes. The area between two nodes is known as an internode. See if you can identify the different portions of this twig before the labels appear on the screen. Did you get them all correct? Flowers are the reproductive structures of some trees. A complete flower is one that contains all four floral organs, which are petals, sepals, one or more carpels, which is the female reproductive organ, and stamens, which is the male reproductive organ. A complete flower is one that contains all four of these. Tree fruits can take many forms, and we'll discuss some of those in the tree ID module of these presentations. Angiosperms are flowering plants whose seeds are enclosed in an ovary. Gymnosperms, or naked seed plants, are those that have no outer covering. Let's look at this graphic of the cross section of a tree stem. The stem of the tree functions in the conduction of water and minerals to support the tree and in the storage of carbohydrate reserves. The outer covering of tree branch or stem is the bark, indicated by letter A in this graphic. The bark functions to moderate temperature, defend against insects and injury, and reduce water loss. You may also see small openings in the bark that are visible. These are called lenticels and they allow for gas exchange. 
The cambium, labeled E in your graphic, is a very thin continuous sheath of radially dividing cells that produces the xylem to the inside, indicated by D in your graphic, and phloem to the outside, indicated by B. The phloem carries sugars and food down from the leaves to the rest of the tree. The xylem carries water and nutrients up from the roots to the rest of the tree. Some people distinguish the difference between xylem and phloem by remembering that xi goes to the sky. The xylem, or the area of active living wood, functions to transport water and nutrients, store food and water, and provide support for the tree. It can be thought of as a continuous column of water where the evaporation of molecules from the leaves pulls the water up through the tree. Xylem is also called sapwood indicated by letter D in your graphic. Farther inside the tree is the dark wood called the heartwood. This is labeled C in your graphic. This is composed of dead cells and provides support for the tree. Growth rings are the annual production of xylem by the cambium. They are visible because of the contrast between colors. The light colored ring is early or spring wood and tends to be thicker. This is a period of very active growth for the tree in the spring. The dark colored ring comes later in the season and is called summer wood. It tends to be a thinner ring and darker in color. If you wanted to know a year's growth, you have to combine the light and dark ring together for one year. Radial transport is the horizontal movement or, of water or nutrients between cells through the ray cells. Rays are channels of cells where water, nutrients, and carbohydrates move laterally through the tree across the stem. Xylem rays in the sapwood are the pathway for food movements to and from the phloem. If you'll remember from earlier slides, the phloem is just under the bark of the tree. The annual production of layers of tissue at the junction of the branch to the stem forms a shoulder or bulge called the branch collar. This is an important biologic guide for when we do pruning cuts. Reaction wood is abnormal wood formed in response to lean or similar mechanical stress that tries to return the tree to vertical form. It is formed in the main stem of a leaning tree or inclined tree, and it's formed in branches. The function of reaction wood is to bring the main stem or the branch back to a normal position. A vertical trunk forms normal wood plus some of reaction wood when it moves in the wind. Horizontal branches and leaning branches must form reaction wood in an attempt to prevent them from bending and cracking under their own weight. Compression wood forms on the underside of branches and contains more lignin than normal wood. Wood with a high lignin content is especially strong in compression. Tension wood forms on the upper side of hardwoods and contains more cellulose than the normal wood. Wood with a high cellulose content is especially strong in tension and can resist bending downward, which is good in a branch. Both strategies are helpful to the tree. Overall tree form tends to either be X current or D current. Most trees start out with some sort of X current traits when they are juveniles, but over time they may tend toward one form or the other. X current trees tend to have strong apical control, resulting in that upright tree with strong central leaders. You see this in species like your conifers, maybe sweet gum, tulip poplar. The decurrent tree form is when your lateral shoots outgrow the original terminal shoot year after year that results in that rounded head or decurrent form. This can be most commonly seen in trees like your maples. Let's look at the root system of trees. One third to one half the volume or biomass of the tree is underground. Imagine pulling a tree out of the ground, shaking the soil off and weighing it. Half of that weight can be the root system of the tree. 
Because roots need oxygen in order to grow, trees don't normally grow well in compacted or oxygen poor soils or waterlogged soils. As a tree expert, you may encounter trees in, in very compacted soils in an urban setting, or perhaps you're called in to do some tree care work on trees that have been involved in a flood situation. The root collar is usually at or near the ground line and is marked by a swelling of the tree trunk. When we see young trees that have recently been planted start to fail from the top of the tree down, one thing that we can look for is to see if the root collar has been buried below the soil line. Some species do have tap roots that grow straight down three to seven feet or more until it encounters an impenetrable layer or there's insufficient supplies of oxygen for the roots to grow. Typically, as a tree expert in an urban environment in Maryland, you will not see this. The framework of major roots usually lies less than 12 inch, inches below the soil surface. It often grows out very wide horizontally as much as one to two times the height of the tree. If you can imagine laying the tree on its side on the ground, roots often extend one to two times that length. The feeder roots grow outward and upward from those framework roots. These smaller roots form mats of thousands of fine, short, non-woody roots. These slender roots with their tiny root hairs provide the major portion of the absorptive surface of a tree's root system. They compete directly with the roots of grasses and other ground covers. This is why we encourage mulching around a tree to reduce some of that competition from grass and other ground covers. A healthy root system, when you evaluate it, should be white in color. Let's look at the function of root systems as it radiates away from the trunk of the tree. The large woody roots have the main function of anchoring or keeping the tree up. The next lateral roots have functions that include anchorage, conduction of water and nutrients, and storage of the sugars from the photosynthetic process. The fine absorptive roots are small fibrous primary tissues that have epidermal cells that are modified into root hairs, and it's these fine root hairs that aid in uptake of water and minerals. Water and essential elements are absorbed from the soil by the roots. Some water is used for growth and metabolism, but most is lost through evaporation. This water loss creates transpirational pull that moves water through the xylem. Too little or too much soil moisture can result in leaf water deficits. Water deficits can cause slowed photosynthesis stomatal closure, as we've already discussed, and wilting leaves. If the water potential is lower in the soil, water will actually move out of the roots into the soil. For example, when salt concentrations are high in the soil from de-icing or excessive fertilization, water can be drawn out of the roots, causing what's called fertilizer burn. The roots of most plant species live in a symbiotic relationship with certain fungi. The term mycorrhizae means fungus roots. The fungi aid the roots in absorption of water and essential minerals, while the fungi derive nourishment from the roots. Mycorrhizae increase the roots' ability to absorb water and essential elements. The fungi are essential to the health of the plant. They form a symbiotic or mutually beneficial relationship with the roots and act as an extension of the tree's root systems by increasing their absorption of water and nutrients. Mycorrhizal fungi produce structures called hyphae that allow them to forage for some nutrients more efficiently than the roots can do alone. The fungi transfer some of these nutrients to the roots and in return receive carbohydrates. Because the relationship between trees and mycorrhizae are symbiotic, both the tree and the fungi benefit. Mycorrhizae are more effective than the tree roots at accumulating the water and nutrients, and they can store excess nutrients, releasing them to the tree as it's needed. 
Nutrient uptake, particularly that of phosphorus, is enhanced in infertile soils because the mycelial strands and their protruding hyphae explore the soil more extensively than non-mycorrhizal roots. The fungi also inhibit invasion by damaging fungi and can extend the life to root tips. Mycorrhizae release acids that break down substances that the tree cannot use without their help. And they can fix nitrogen from both the soils and the atmosphere so it becomes more available to the trees. Mycorrhizal fungi produce hormones that encourage the production of new root tip growth, which aids both the tree and the fungi. The fungi cannot manufacture their own food due to lack of chlorophyll. That process, as you may remember, that converts sunlight to energy to use to produce sugars. Therefore, the fungi must get this food from the chlorophyll producing plants. They do this by either penetrating the plant's roots or forming a sheath around the root tip. This energy allows the fungi to reproduce and form large networks within the soil structure. A process unique to trees is the ability to compartmentalize decay. Compartmentalization is a process by which the tree might limit the spread of discoloration and decay. After a tree's been wounded, reactions are triggered in the tree which cause it to form boundaries around the wounded area. This model was developed by Dr. Alex Shigo. It's known as coded and it means compartmentalization of decay in trees. In the model, Shigo outlines four barriers or walls of defense. Wall one tries to resist vertical spread by plugging up the xylem vessels. You may remember xylem is the means by which the tree transports water and nutrients. Wall two resists spread inward into the tree by that more compact summer wood that we discussed and by depositing chemicals in those cells. Wall three inhibits the lateral spread by activate, activating those ray cells to resist the decay. These three walls of defense are called the reaction zone. Then the fourth wall, which is often considered the strongest wall of defense, is the formation of callus wood and protects against the outward spread of the decay. Wall one is the weakest wall of defense. Wall four is the strongest wall of defense. At times, the tree cannot resist the spread of really aggressive pathogens. It is often common for walls one, two, and three to fail, allowing the decay to spread inside the tree. That's when you start to see hollows forming or a cavity. Wall four rare, rarely fails, except where canker-causing fungi restrict its development or actually kill the cambium that's trying to create that callus wood. Here is another graphic of what code it may look like on a tree. Wall one and two in this graphic have failed in keeping the spread of the pathogen or decay in the tree. Wall four, again, the strongest wall of defense, has started to create new wood. This may look like callus rolls or what people often refer to as ram's horns. Here's a photograph of a large diameter tulip poplar. Can you identify the different walls of defense on this tree? As you can see in this photograph, Wall four forms to stop the spread of decay to the new wood growth as the tree grows radially. The person that made these pruning cuts did so properly without interrupting the tissues needed to form that callus wood. If the tree is vigorous enough and these, this callus wood can close over the wound, then the tree will be protected from the spread of decay. Understanding the coded model helps us to understand why we do not top trees. As you can see, half of wall one has been eliminated. Walls two and three are exposed to decay and disease, and the sprout growth is only supported by wall four and is not attached as a properly formed branch.
We hope you found this supplemental presentation to be helpful as you prepare for the tree expert exam. This concludes Chapter 2, Biology. Please proceed to Chapter 3, Nutrition, Fertilization, Soil, and Water.